Section battle bus in your if you're in the Corporation Street area of Birmingham, come and take a look. Just a handful of miles outside of Birmingham, around six miles is Sutton Coalfield. There's a whole slew of beautiful countryside. Actually, that's the joy of Birmingham. It doesn't take long before you really do get out in the countryside. Unlike perhaps a city such as London. There's Sutton Coalfield, and the sitting MP fighting again is Andrew Mitchell. He's former Secretary of State for International Development and indeed Chief Whip, and he's climbed on board the bus. Mr. Mitchell, thank you for making the journey. Welcome on board. Good morning. Um, one of my callers just saying there, Andrew Mitchell, that this general election hasn't really sparked into life it it hasn't really gained full momentum there hasn't been any standout moments is that what politicians hope do they just want to get their messages across and they don't want any of these distractions and do you agree with what he was saying well I think that there's an enormous number of undecideds uh, uh, around um, in this election I, I've been in quite a lot of seats around the West Midlands over the last two weeks and uh, I'm very conscious a lot of people are thinking very seriously about how they're going to vote and it reminds me a bit of the 1992 election and uh, certainly I hope that uh, that's the case because in the 1992 election it was only in the last weekend and the last few days that support for the Conservative Party hardened and of course John Major got the largest Conservative vote we've ever had before or since so I think there are some signs that the election is a bit like that but what is certainly true uh, particularly here in the West Midlands, is that there's an enormous number of people who have yet to make up their mind. Andrew, how fair is it to say uh, that UKIP stole some of Conservatives' clothing? It, it, it is true, but it is also true that in the Birmingham area, UKIP are taking a lot of Labour votes, and we've seen it um, around Birmingham. Uh, we saw it a bit in my patch that, that UKIP are reaching into the Labour Party, and that uh, will mean that in Birmingham it's very hard to read some of the results. They're saying that it could be as much as 25% of the electorate is yet to decide. There's that much still in play. Obviously, it's impossible to actually know. Do you, you, from what you were saying earlier, you agree it could be that higher number? I wouldn't be remotely surprised at the moment. I mean, I think people are making up their minds, but, but uh, so a, a lot the, have not. Why has your party, why has Labour, why have, why have they failed to break through? Why are so many people in play? Well, I think, I think it's been a very tough five years, and uh, people have felt that. But uh, the long-term economic plan that George Osborne has implemented, often in the teeth of opposition down those five years, uh, has been seen to be a success. Many people said it would fail, but it has delivered high growth. It has delivered low inflation. Uh, here in Birmingham, over the last year, we have seen more new jobs created by the private sector than in the whole of France. So, you know, it's been a tough time, but we are getting through it. And I think, I think people are trying to make up their mind whether they want to stick to that plan um, or, as I would see it, go back to the bad old days when Labour wrecked the economy. How enjoyable are elections for you personally? Well, I must say I'm rather enjoying this one because last time uh, I had uh, uh, greater uh, responsibilities in the shadow cabinet and I went and visited 86 marginal seats around the country. But this time I'm in the West Midlands um, and I'm very much enjoying my time on the doorstep, particularly in my own constituency, talking to people and What are they hearing saying about to you, Mr issues. Mitchell? Well, as I say, a lot of them are saying we've yet to make up our minds. Right. Right, uh, right. Um, it's not it's not quite the same in Sutton Coalfield, but in other in other constituencies, people are I think being very thoughtful and and, and trying to read all the stuff. Uh, a lot of people have said we're reading all the stuff through the door, which is rather encouraging because we do push an enormous amount of literature <laughs> at this time of, uh, of an election campaign through the door, and they're making up their minds on the basis of what they hear on the media and what they read through their own letterbox. Um, you were once in charge of the international development brief. In fact, I think you and I might have clashed. Professionally clashed yes, a did, couple indeed. of times yes. over the expenditure. But um, to more serious matters, far more serious than cash, and that's human lives. And I understand you visited some of the areas in Nepal that have suffered some of these tragedies, Mr. Mitchell. Yes, I was there in 2012 looking at the way British money was being spent in the Gurkhali areas because, of course, we owe the Gurkhas so much in this country for the service they have rendered to our country. And particularly two of the villages which we've seen on our screens, which have been devastated by this earthquake, Laprak and Barpak, I visited uh, with the Gurkhas uh, in 2012 to see how British money could do more for this community, which has helped us so much. And it's heartbreaking seeing these uh, pictures. And it's, it's, it's good to see that Britain, with its historic links with Nepal, is right at the front of the countries that are helping these people in desperate need at this awful time. How stoical are those people? 
people back there. Oh, I mean, they're, 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 the, the Nepalese, they're a very poor country. I think they're the poorest country in Asia. So they battle with the elements and they battle with poverty. They are a wonderfully stoical people. And this, you would argue, of course, speaks to the need for international... I would imagine speaks to the, you'd say, it speaks to the need for international aid and development budget. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, you know, Britain is a world leader on development and we are right there uh, with the reforms we made in 2010 doing uh, even more to help. And the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal, which was launched uh, yesterday, will have a real impact supporting these brilliant uh, British charities like Save the Children and Oxfam who are absolutely critical at these desperate times. So a big brief you ran there, also Chief Whip. Um, if or when the Conservative formed a government, would you want a, a big job again back into the Cabinet? Well, I've, 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 made, I've always said that I want to help my party in any way I can and I very much want to go back into frontline politics. But most important of all, I very much hope that the Conservatives will win this election with an outright majority because that's what, that's what Britain needs and that David Cameron will be back in, in number 10 uh, after May the 7th. And you'd like to be going into number 10 behind him as one of his key team. Well, that's not, that's not for me to uh, say, but I've never made any well, the secret. the phone to ring. I've never made any secret of the fact that I very much want to return to frontline politics if the chance is available. What's it all going to turn on, this election, do you think? The well, economy th slowed down a bit. I mean, it's still OK, but it slowed down a bit yesterday, didn't it? Well, it, 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 is the, it is the economy that is the key. It is whether we are going to stick to a plan that has delivered. But it's, it's also more than that, because one of the things that the Conservative Party is trying to do is to show people that another five years of Conservative Party will lead us through the tunnel and to the sunny lands beyond. And, and, but the critical thing is you can't do what we want to do for the NHS and for education and for Britain's great public services unless you have a successful economy. And I think that's the point that George Osborne has been ramming home in this election, that we have got it right and we must persist with that plan. But if Ed, Ed Balls were on the bus now, there wouldn't be much room for all three of us, I have to say. But if Mr Balls was on the bus, he'd say, but you've borrowed more than ever before. We're a trillion pounds in debt. No government's ever borrowed like this, Mr well, Mitchell. Th but that is true. And, and of course, we have uh, reduced the deficit very significantly but we have not cut the debt. We have to do that. The Labour Party opposed all the changes that we made in reducing public expenditure, so it would be astronomically higher if they were in power. And the reason we have to tackle this is not just because it's the right thing to do for our economy to avoid an economic crisis. It's also because it is utterly wrong to transfer debt from one generation to another. It is our generation of politicians who have racked up this debt in Britain, and it's up to our generation to repair it and not pass it on to our children and our grandchildren. Children. Lastly, you look very well. Last time I saw you, you looked on the TV. You looked a bit haggard and drawn after the Plebgate affair. Do you regret ever taking that, le that legal action? Well, with, with hindsight, of course, I regret almost every aspect of it. But we did what we thought was right uh, throughout. And as I've said, you know, it's, it's long past time to move on, and we have moved on. What was the impact for you financially in the end? Oh, the impact is appalling, but in, you either let these things ruin your life or you draw a line and you move on and I have a very strong family and I and my family had decided some time ago to move on and we really have moved on. All right. You're not going to tell me how much it cost you in the end, there's fig all sorts of figures floating around, million pounds, 1.5 million pounds, 2 million pounds. I think it's best to move on. Good luck with the campaigning. Thanks Thank for coming on board indeed. the bus. Uh, safe journey back. Those uh, is it six miles to Sutton Coldfield? It is. And it among is. your constituents. Yes. Good luck no, I'm that. heading straight back now. Thank okay. you very much. Andrew Mitchell, thank you for climbing on board the LBC election battle bus here in Birmingham. It's 9.45. Fantastic.